Probably the most important concept in lockdown is adjustment tracking. So if we have a shot like this, you can take a look at some of the details on this jellyfish and they all get lost here and then they come back into view later. So how do we deal with something like this? Especially knowing that the tracker might get confused because this is transparent. You have the motion from inside of the jellyfish fighting the texture on the top. You might not know exactly where the points are going to go. So let's get started by placing a point here right next to this little notch on this stripe because we know that it's not going to be able to track as the jellyfish squishes. So it's tracking okay and then that's gone. That texture is gone for a moment and then this just resumes the best it can, right? So watching this, it's going okay and then it doesn't know where to go so it just follows what it can see and now it's off. So how do we deal with this? Well in lockdown it's really easy just click and drag the point back to where it's supposed to be. And as we play forward, it's doing better than it was, right? This, this small correction is mostly working, but you'll notice it's somewhat drifting here. That's because, let me just delete this adjustment keyframe. It's following the motion that it was seeing here. These keyframes haven't been retracted after we've made our adjustment. So with lockdown, what you would do is you would adjust it, and that's creating a secondary animation track of these crosshair keyframes, which you can see down here. These can be edited by creating an adjustment point like this, or just by clicking and dragging. You can delete an individual, or you can delete the entire track using this button. And then, to get the software to track intelligently, you would press track all. What this does, it's going to track, and it's going to know that at this adjustment point, which is the crosshair, the bullseye, it's going to have to hit this point on its track and then find its way over to this point here. And for every other crosshair that you have, it's going to have to find its way. And then because there are no additional crosshairs over to the right, it's going to start tracking from here to the right. So this would be the proper way to track something is by making adjustments. Now, the great thing is you can have as many adjustments as you want. And this actually already looks pretty good. I probably didn't need these. And every time you press track all, your track should get a little bit better taking in all this new information. You'll notice this bar down here where it's green, there have been no changes. We've already tracked the previous time between this keyframe and this keyframe, these adjustment keyframes. But we have new data out here in the timeline, which is why it's red. So when we press track all, it's going to work within those areas. And now those have been updated and the track should just be a little bit more accurate. So if I wanted to track several points on this jellyfish, the way that I would get started is I would probably just create a point wherever and then I would press track all or maybe I would do this with um, a handful of points. But actually let's just take a look at one more point. So there is another option here. I could track this and then make the adjustment or I could scrub along to the end of the video and let's say that we are watching this line here. When I have this selected, it's going to be visible and then I can make the adjustments before it tracks, which might save me a little bit of time. So now I have my four adjustments here and you can see it hitting each of those points. However, it's not showing up where it doesn't have any tracking keyframes. Probably now is a good time to mention you see these black keyframe areas, there's no data there. And in the area where it has been tracked, I'll just track a couple of frames, you can see that it's gray. And you can delete left to right by selecting a keyframe or keyframes and pressing this button, delete left. However, that also deletes adjustment keyframes too, so just be aware of that. So anyway, I'll press track all. And you can see this point is tracking. So you would continue onward to do that with multiple points. I'll do that on time lapse now. I find it helpful to go back to the known adjustment point and scrub along and just follow it visually. And actually you can tab back and forth between adjustment points by pressing J and K. And that can help you make comparisons. So scrubbing along, that's actually working pretty well. There is a separate tutorial based on stabilized tracking, but I just want to touch on this here. In order to use stabilized tracking, it's usually helpful to have the mesh expanded. So I'm going to create some expansion points, Control, Alt, Shift, and Click on Windows, Command, Alt, Shift, and Click on Mac. 
and I'll enable interpolation. We can take a look at the two types of interpolation to see which works better. Two-point interpolation, these just following along where they can. Not the worst. And let's just take a look at how the planar one works. This might get a little bit extreme as this crunches. Actually, that looks not bad. So then we'll generate a mesh and then take a look in the stabilized tracking tab. So now where this is stabilized, this is a pretty interesting perspective because it can make some points easier to follow. So let's take a look at maybe this point right here. We'll scrub along and say this is pretty easy to visually follow here in the stabilized tracking tab because a lot of the motion has been taken out. Whereas that might have been a little bit harder to identify out in the main tracking tab. So right now this area is kind of wiggling and moving. Um, but then we can track this either in the stabilized tracking tab or in the main tab. What I'm going to do is just to make sure that none of these other points move, I'm going to lock them. And in here, I'm just going to press track all and you'll see this point track. Sometimes it tracks very well in the stabilized tracking tab because the motion has been eliminated. So taking a look at that point, you can see it's tracking really well here before this texture kind of disappears. And that makes sense that it's going to have a little bit of difficulty as it kind of folds out of existence there and then tracks well here where it's also still visible. So it's definitely a toss up on where you're going to get better results in stabilized tracking. I think that for something that's not distorting a lot or something that's just shaking around violently, you'll definitely get better results in stabilized tracking as you'll see in that tutorial. And for something like this, um, kind of hit or miss. But what I would say is this is definitely the best place to make adjustments. So you can see right here that there's a lot of motion in this and we can add this back to the stabilized mesh to slowly start to lock down this jellyfish. I'll go back to the tracking tab. I'm going to clear the mesh, auto triangulate. And now when I move back into the stabilized tracking tab, take a look at the video behind this point and take a look at this point. It was just moving and now it's being held still, which would probably make other points easier to track around it. Could also see that maybe this point would be easier And the best part is I don't actually have to rerun the tracking process when I make these adjustments. So as I move this way, you see it's not quite attached perfectly here. So I'll move this point and then I'll press reapply. And now this is being stabilized. Notice how that point's not moving again. And I can move this down here and I can press reapply. And that's been stabilized. And I'm slowly pulling this back to exactly where it needs to be each time I press this button. You don't have to hit reapply every time. I'm just kind of showing the point that that's what that button is for. And for this point that didn't track particularly well, maybe it was being influenced by some other factors around it, or it just only tracked from two adjustments. This is going to be pretty easy to bring back to where it needs to be. Realistically, you probably didn't need as many adjustment keyframes as you saw here. You probably could have just went back and retracted it but I think that's a good concept to show how you can adjust and press reapply. Now this button only works when interpolation is on for the layer, by the way. So meaning when this is on or this is on, it's not gonna have any effect here. Even though track adjustment isn't interpolation, all this keyframe stuff kind of works together in the same system. So that's why it's called reapply interpolation. Interpolation must be on. Okay, so I'll do one more round to really drive this concept in. I'll create a point here. See how easy it is to follow this now that a lot of the motion has been knocked out because the points around it have been stabilized. I'll press reapply interpolation here and see even just from making these adjustments without actually doing any tracking, that's starting to stabilize that already. There is no tracking data on this point at all. It's literally just these adjustment points that I've made, just like that last one. And just showing that it's already kind of moving okay. It's already tracking and stabilizing pretty well because this motion for this point, in a sense, is dependent on the other points which have been stabilized around it. Um, you know, kind of a weird concept to think of, but take a look at these four points. If I were to create an extension point here, it's already moving kind of, you know, following the points around it. 
So that's why even without running the track, it's already doing a pretty good job. So let's see this point here and see how it's moving. Again, this has zero tracking data. It's just following along. And now to really make this track nicely, I'll press track all. And now that point is pretty thoroughly on there. And let's go take a look at it in the stabilize tab. All right. And to see this actually contribute to the mesh here, let's uh, let's just clear the mesh, auto triangulate. And now the effects that now that it's part of the mesh, it should look like it's not moving at all. There and the video is going to be moving around it and then you can compensate by moving there. This is a lot to take in. I, I definitely chose a video, which was a real pain to deal with. Uh, just so we could really show how to use adjustment tracking in a worst case scenario. But you'll see in all the other tutorials when it's not a jellyfish that's bending and folding and flopping in half with transparent parts, it's probably only going to take one or two adjustment points to nail the whole shot.